The 2020-21 season countdown is brought to you by Odds Checker, your one-stop betting hub. Hi and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a summer transfer and move to Arsenal. Brought to you today by Odds Checker. We are counting down the start to the brand new Premier League season and there is only one day to go. It all kicks off tomorrow when Arsenal take on Fulham at Craven Cottage. Cannot wait. And... Uh, Odds Checker, you can get all the bookies all in one place, your one-stop hub. Um, the link is in the description for more information on that. Uh, I've been checking the odds. I've spoken about this one before. Arsenal, 45-1 to 1 to win the Premier League. I'm putting a tenner on it, man. No, I'm serious. Remember when Leicester won it? You know, come on. We, I know, listen, I know we've got no chance and uh, the odds don't lie, but God, it's worth a tenner, isn't it? You know, 45 to 1. Um, but as I said, the real deal kicks off and I cannot wait. Fulham at Craven Cottage. Don't forget to check out all the previews that we um, have got around there. We've been doing lots of stuff building up to it this week, the super fan debates. We've got a preview coming out later on that we did at Fulham. So make sure you check it out. Now, there's been a few changes at Arsenal. The, the Arsenal CEO yesterday, um, Vinay uh, Van Katersham, talking to uh, the Arsenal fans, you know, putting a message out there um, and giving us kind of an update on a lot of information that's happening, telling us about um, what's uh, mi happening with Mikel Arteta. Um, but just before I get to that, it was really interesting to hear his comments on the super agents. You know, there's been a lot of talk recently that uh, Arsenal have become one of these clubs that just work with exclusive super agents. There's Kia Jarapchin, of course, who's got quite a lot of players at Arsenal now. Willian, you know, um, David Luiz, you know, all, you know, Cedric, all these players that have come in have all been through one agent and also have been accused of being one of those clubs now that just work with a particular agent to bring in all their players. Vinay responded by saying, and these are his quotes, I see, um, read and absorb a lot of what is being said about how we work with agents. We don't select players based on the identity of their agent. We select players based on the position we need to strengthen and the characteristics we are looking for in a player. And if the player is out there who meets those characteristics, who the agent comes out at the end, um, once we've decided who the player is, we are not signing players based on the identity of the agent. That would be a crazy strategy. So um, seemingly there, he's clearing that up. And uh, they're obviously not being very happy with those stories coming out that, you know, basically we're one of these sort of agent-led clubs. There are a lot of clubs like that. Um, Wolves are known for dealing with a particular agent and getting most of their players in that way. For some clubs, it works. For other clubs, you know, they end up playing mega agency fees. Um, so he moved to try and, uh, you know, dispel that. Um, and then he also spoke about a new role for the manager, Mikel Arteta. Um, Mikel Arteta, of course, has been the head coach of Arsenal. That was what he was brought in as. That was his role, head coach. But uh, Vinay is saying that that role has changed and the job title, and, and they also put it out on the website as well, is changed from head, head coach to first team manager. And these are his quotes on it. He says, Mikel's been here since the end of December and the last nine months have probably been the most challenging nine months in Arsenal's history. And we've been around for 134 years. Despite all those challenges, Mikel has been the drive has been driving this football club forward. Um, he's lifted the spirits and lifted the energy here at London Coney, and with the Arsenal fans across the world, world he's doing an absolutely phenomenal job. And uh, yeah, Mikel Arteta given a new role as head coach. That means he's going to be working very closely with Edu um, on transfers and you know on a lot more things than just coaching the team. And uh, I think it's a very positive thing. It's recognition, as I said, um, by reading those quotes, that he's been doing a great job um, at the club. And I think it's a very positive thing 
that he's going to have a lot more control now over transfers because um, you even heard Unai Emery, the past manager, saying that, you know, there were certain signings made that he wasn't really in agreement with. Um, because basically a head coach, when you're the head coach, really your job is <laughs> get on and coach the players. We'll buy the players. You can have a little bit of input into it, depending on the club. But your job is get on and coach those players and just make sure they perform. Now, Mikel Arteta has been given a bigger role, and I think that's only a good thing. He can get in the players that he wants that's going to suit the system that he wants to play. Um, so that's great news. But will he be able to keep hold of Emi Martinez, who's been a revelation in goal since he came in for the injured Bern Leno? Um Lots of lots of reports around today that um, he's set to join Aston Villa. Um, he's agreed terms on wages worth £60,000 a week. I've told you guys a few times that at Arsenal at the moment, he's only on £20,000 a week. Arsenal have been trying to negotiate a new deal with him. Um, they haven't been really looking to sell him. However, um, you know, he wants first-team football. Maybe he's not going to get that offer of um, first-team football by staying at Arsenal, and it looks like he could be on his way out. Villa, we know, have made a couple of bids. Their latest bid is said to be something around about the £15 million pound mark. Arsenal want £20 million for him. Um, and Arsenal have also been looking at uh, David Rea um, from Brentford as a backup to Leno. But Arsenal looking to, you know, if they are going to sell him, They'll want £20 million pounds for him. It'd be a real shame. It'd be a real shame. Um, he's been excellent, you know, and, you know, it'd be a real shame to see him go. But if he really wants to leave to get first-team football, and this is the problem you have with goalkeepers, it's a bit different when you say to an outfield player, you know, stay and fight for your place because they have a real chance of coming in, staying in, they can be moved into other positions and a goalkeeper is goal in goal or that's it. And if you're being offered bigger wages elsewhere and a chance to like play every single week, you're going to be that guy. You're going to be the number one. It's very hard to turn down. And for Arsenal who don't have loads of money to spend. And again, yesterday, uh, Edu and, you know, Vinay talking about the challenges that Arsenal face unprecedented, the lack of money around, the fact that they are looking to buy players, but obviously it's very, very challenging. If a £20 million bid comes in for Martinez, a player who probably, you know, at the start of this year, we would have been lucky to get £2 million for. Unfortunately, it's probably going to make sense to let him go. But it'd be a shame to see him go because... I think at this moment in time, he's, he's the number one goalkeeper. But if he does go, we do know that we've got another top quality keeper in Leno to slot right in. And um, as I said on yesterday's show, it's going to be a big indication of what's happening when we see who starts the game tomorrow. If Leno starts, I feel that that is Martinez on his way out. What about Hector Bellerin, who we've been discussing a lot on the show Linked heavily with a move to um, PSG. There's been talk of Barcelona as well. Well, PSG uh, look like they won't be moving in now for Hector Bellerin. They wanted Hector Bellerin. They'd spoken to Arsenal about a loan move for Hector Bellerin, which was turned down um, by Arsenal. Not interested in a loan move at all. Um, PSG, of course, desperate for a right back. Um, they uh, lost Mounier. He went to um, Borussia Dortmund. Well, they're on the verge of signing um, Alessandro uh, Florenzi from Roma. Um, Thomas Tuchel was asked about it last night after their game against Lons, and um, he said that, you know, they're very, very close to getting that deal done. That would rule out any move um, for Hector Bellerin, and it's looking more and more likely that Hector Bellerin will stay. What would that do for Ainsley Maitland-Nars? Because there's been reports today bit baseless, these reports, not with any real substance that he's considering his future because he wants to play week in, week out. But as I said, looking deeply into those stories, I don't see anything in that. It's just, it's almost as if because that news is coming out that looks like Bellerin won't be moving, that they just, you know, 
oh, let's make up a story without any information on the Ainsley situation. My information on the Ainsley situation is that he is, you know, he wants to stay at Arsenal. Mikel Arteta has made it pretty clear that he wants to keep him. And now that he's got a bit more control, um, we should expect that to happen unless, unless a big offer came in for Ainsley before the end of the transfer window, which is possible, you know I mean? We can't rule that out. But at the moment, there hasn't been no big bid that's coming for him, and it does look like Ainsley will be staying put. Uh, Thomas Tucker was also asked about these links linking Gwenduzi with a swap move for um, Julian Draxler. We spoke about that one yesterday. He ruled it out completely. He said that they're not interested in Gwenduzi. Also finding it very difficult at the moment to uh, offload uh, Gwenduzi, um, but Thomas Tucker was saying that um, PSG not interested in Guinduzi, despite all these reports that were going around over the past couple of days saying that they are really, really interested in him. That's why you've got to hear it from the horse's mouth. Um, also, uh, Hossim Awa, uh, there's reports coming out that Hossim Awa has told Leon he wants to leave. He wants out of the club, um, definitely wants to move uh, this summer. Of course, Arsenal really, really interested in signing him not just arsenal there's a few clubs man city are one of those clubs interested in him as well um juventus as well said to be interested in him again it's who's going to come up with the money money is short very short who's going to come up with the money to get that deal done but hossi moir telling leon that he wants to leave the club now what about this link stephen el sharari and now sharari Previously at Roma, a really, really good player at Roma, a bit of a legend at Roma. He'd been there, was there for a while, and they re the fans loved him. Um, then he moved to China, which was a bit strange because he's still only uh, 27. Um, went to uh, Guangzhou Evergrande. <laughs> um, of course, the Chinese clubs, not short of a few bob and are able to pay incredible wages. That would explain why he went. But he's available at the moment on a loan move. Um, he's been made available on loan. It's a kind of strict. He's got to come back to um, Europe. There's strict quarantine rules about returning to China at the moment. And his club have made him available on a loan move until January um, and they've also inserted in there um, an option to extend the loan from January till the end of the season and a further option for any club that's interested to buy him. Now, he's a quality player. As I said, when he was at Roma, you know, a lot of clubs were looking at him, including Arsenal, um, under Arsene Wenger. They were very interested in him. Um, as I said, ended up going to uh, China, but available on loan. Reports that Arsenal have made um, contacts um, with his people and with the um, club uh, Gwenzu Evergrande about a possible loan move for Stephen El Shirari. And of course, we know that loan moves are things that are happening a lot during this transfer window. It's a real different type of transfer windows with lots of loan moves, swap moves, stuff like that. Money short. Again, as I said, you know, Arsenal hierarchy talking about that yesterday, that, you know, how difficult it was to be making staff redundant etc the big the big money is not out there so loan moves are getting done but again though he, the position he plays in i don't know I, i'm not too sure that that's what is required at arsenal right now and i'm not too sure if we'll see that one happen um you know we've got enough players going forward uh, you can never discount quality but I just feel that we've got enough players going forward and, and that would just be an unnecessary um, use of wages. Um, so I, I can't see that one happening, but the links are everywhere today for that. And will we hear an announcement today of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang? Loads of reports coming out yesterday that the deal is done. Um, it's signed, it's sealed. Could it be announced? It makes sense to announce it now before Arsenal play against Fulham. We'll give a major boost to all Arsenal fans, to the club. Um, they didn't announce it yesterday. Of course, they announced the, the new kit that came out. Um, 
and all the new you know, new kit, new training kits, as you can see with this. They announced that yesterday. The big announcement was on that yesterday, new third kit. Um, could they announce today that Aubameyang signed? Because it's done. The deal is done. Just do the announcement. So could that happen today? Could it happen tomorrow just before the Fulham game? Will they announce it just after the game? Who knows? Um, but it does look like that is done. And that's one of the, that'll be one of the biggest and best bits of transfer business Arsenal have done for a long time. And that is keeping hold of their star player. Something that we have not been able to do for a very, very long time. Um, it would send a big statement. And I think, again, a lot of that will be down to Mikel Arteta. I really do feel that had Mikel Arteta not have come in, you know, Aubameyang would be gone this summer. He would not be here. So it's very important going forward that Aubameyang stays and it looks like that will happen. Hopefully we get an announcement on that today. So um, the real thing starts tomorrow. Um, we're going to be doing a watch along to it, of course. Make sure you check that out. Looking forward to the game. Arsenal taking on Fulham. It's behind closed doors. But um, yeah, I can't wait for it. Thanks for watching the show and we'll be back tomorrow. Robbie here from AFTV. We just got to say a big thank you to everybody who follows us across our various channels. Over a million followers on YouTube. Don't forget, you can now also catch us on Reddit. We're on Reddit, so get involved with us on Reddit and also on TikTok. Keep it AFTV, baby, right here.